Today, we're taking a look at some of the most creative robots and mechanisms from week four of the FTC decode season. Move it to one location, but then also iterate upon this design. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics design for over a decade now, and I've mentored FTC teams to national championships in our region. We're going to take a look at a bunch of different uh, intake types and what styles of intakes seem to be pretty successful so far. We're going to take a look at some creative different lifting mechanisms some interesting ways people will be making different shooters and some small tweaks to be able to improve this. And then we're also going to take a look at some full robot designs. First up here, we're going to take a look at some shooters here. We've got the Rundells 15549. And this is the two things I like about this. The first one I like is that it's testing our shooter 1.4. And I love seeing things iterating on the design, not making a brand new design. Iterating over time is the exact kind of thing we want to be seeing on these designs. Uh, it looks like they've got some rubber bands stacked up on the side to see if that can increase some grip. And it's a quick way, a quick and dirty way to see if that's going to actually improve or deprove their design. I also like that they have this little copper box that they're having it set up on so they can just feed up through the bottom. I think it's a really quick way of checking out a, a shooter. Nice job on that, uh, Rondels. So RoboPiece is making a come back again we've seen the design before but the reason i like this is that it allows them to actually see how their shooter is designed it's quite simple it's a curved piece of uh, looks like polycarbonate uh, up on the side and this is a pretty accurate uh, shot as well but it's nice because they break down how the design actually looks because we saw this in a previous week but it's nice to actually see how that's all put together so thanks for sharing out that cad for that roll piece i liked this one here from electric cohogs 252 most because they're, again, similar to what 15549 Rondels put in, is they also have some foam in the hood that looks like they just put on with some tape. So trying to find some creative ways of stopping that slippage on that ball. And I'm curious to see just how well that foam piece is actually working for them. And then the last thing on shooter here that I think we're going to see a lot of is teams are starting to get Apple Tag tracking figured out. So we've got Brontobi or Bronto Bite, sorry, 21085. And they've got some pretty functional looking turret tracking on their limelight. This is going to be an interesting decision for teams to decide this season, whether they put the limelight on top of the turret and or they have some sort of camera on top of the turret, be it a husky lens, be it a webcam, whatever have you for Apple Tag tracking, and whether you're going to rotate the turret and keep the lime, keep that camera in the same place, or if you're going to mount the camera on the chassis and then uh, rotate the turret based on where the camera is facing on the chassis. I'm not sure which uh, avenue is going to be a little easier to end up working with. So we'll see where that ends up going. But it's great to see they've got some prototypes set up. So with some shooters out of the way, let's take a look at a lifting design here. This is team uh, 13601, and they've got a couple large rack and pinion systems set up, and it looks like they're using their flywheel motors as an additional motor on top of that to be lifting this whole system up and down. At the first section of this video, it doesn't look like they're able to line up, but I'm assuming they're just holding that one just for a little bit of balance. But we can see it's actually pretty functional for the most part. My guess is they stopped that early so that it doesn't fall over because it's got such a small little uh, hoof but it is a great uh, proof of concept to show that, hey, you know what? A rack and pinion system here could realistically lift your robot up and off the ground. And that is an excellent prototype out of 13601. I love seeing these quick and dirty rapid prototypes for seeing how teams might approach this. Let's take a look at some intakes next. On intakes, we've seen a lot of uh, boot kickers seeing uh, come into popularity here. We've got team uh, FTC 21689 Tesseract, and they're just testing out a quick boot wheel kicker here just to see how well it can work on picking up a ball. I think it's pretty functional. There's a few other boot kickers. This one really surprised me from FTC 23405. Now, this is a lot of torque off of a drill, but they have these gargantuan boot kickers here. But what's surprising, there's so much torque on this setup that it's able to literally hit a flat wall and kick the ball up just because these boot kickers are so large. So boot kickers seem like they may be a, a decent route to take. There's another one here from the Dapper Bots 23695, uh, again, showing the effectiveness that a boot kicker could be taking. Now on this design, it is again, just one boot kicker. It looks like it does need a second ball to be able to feed itself up and through. 
So you need to probably have an additional line on here or slightly longer uh, boot kicking leads or maybe a little foot on the end of these boot kickers instead of just a straight line so that it gives just that little bit of extra kick uh, to be able to get that ball up and running. But this is a great example of using cardboard and some grid pattern plate so you can have some really quick, fast prototypes. I mean, even holding the motor by hand, you have to be cautious with this one a little bit because these motors are pretty torquey and you don't want to wrench your wrist pretty hard. The last intakes here is last week, we took a look at some of Lawrence Engineering's designs and now they've got uh, some different designs set up here. And the reason I want to highlight this is that it shows the concept of iterative design really well. So we've got a rubber band intake and then they've got a rubber band intake on top of a little bit of a boot kicker here, but where you might want to go and how they're slowly shifting the design over time to be able to improve this. They've got a channel in the middle that they might launch to, and then they've got some vector wheels here. But when I say vectored wheels, it's effectively a mechanum wheel or an omni wheel, a bit of an angle. So as a wheel or as a ball comes push up next to these wheels, because they're on a slant, it's going to want to automatically push the ball towards their location. So this is their first iteration. And then they did a second iteration later here where now, and we can actually see those vector wheels better here. So you can see they're angled wheels. So as this ball comes up in, it's going to push it down this way towards their sort of uh, enter point. And then they have another little boot kicker here. So I think that this is an excellent way of showing how you can take a ball, move it to one location, but then also iterate upon this design. So we can see that they've got this little rubber band intake that just stretch around some 3D printed wheels. Originally, they had that ball going through center, but now they're thinking, oh, well, what if we were just to move this all along one side? And we can see just how effective this method of engineering can be. And then they've got that little boot kicker here on the side to be able to actually move it towards their shooter. So I want to show this off not only because I think it's a pretty functional intake with some 3D printed parts, uh, I love that they're showing off all of their all the measurements or dimensions on this to be able to help with other teams. It's fantastic to show that engineering process, but it's also really cool to see that iteration of that design over time. And I love seeing it. I, I hope that more and more teams continue to do things like this because it's so great to see that engineering uh, skills develop up. Last we're going to take a look at is a couple full robots. Now the full robots this week to take a look at are more iterations upon starter bot designs. So this is a iteration from Go Build a Starter Bot where they've effectively taken the straight up point and they've moved it up a little bit higher and added a little bit of curve to it. So they have the same sort of flywheel design. They replaced it with a, a quick intake here, but it allows it to have a little bit more of a curve so that that ball can launch it a little further. I think it's a great way of modifying that starter bot and improving it just a little bit. Also adding in some mechanism wheels uh, and so on. We've got another video here and this is cool from 10131 uh, and 23070. And they call this their base bot. They released something similar for the uh, Into the Deep season, where it was a quick robot prototype you could take with some standard parts from GoBuilder and Rev and Animark, whatever have you, and then get a pretty functional robot up from the start. Now, in terms of functionality, this robot's pretty close to the starter robots that were taken from, from Annie Mark and Go Build and Studica. But it's made with a couple different parts, a couple different 3D parts you could use, maybe a bit of a, a laser print part. So it's cool to see that, you know, they've been able to release this out online for other teams to take a look at and to take a little bit more of inspiration from. And then it looks like they have something called the BaseBot Plus as well, which again, takes a bit more uh, iteration on top of this. We can see an intake being able to hold up three and then there's an adjustment on that. So it's really cool to see that they have a robot that's up, functioning, working pretty well at this point, and then a nice part to be able to iterate off of. Again, it's not perfect, but that's not the design. That's not the intention of it. it's supposed to be. It functions pretty well. Thanks for that, team. Last one here is from Peyton Young. He's made a, what he's calling a starter bot plus, similar to what the uh, base bot guys just did there, where they have, He's taken some slight modifications to the Andy Mark robots where we can see that he's adjusted the cradle for the launching mechanism here to allow it to actually pick up a ball close to a wall. If you were to push in, you can actually grab something from the ground. So instead of having to fully have a human intake, you could intake one ball by driving forward 
And then a human only has to drop in two to be able to drive around. I think it's a great little modification. Added in some mechanism wheels to this design as well. So it just makes your robot a little bit more adaptable to some different scenarios and so on and so forth. So that is a whole bunch of different setups this week. If you're looking for more robotics tutorials, things like uh, CAD and additional resources on top of these different tutorials, you can consider joining the community down below. If you want to submit some of your own designs for next week's FTC Fridays and possibly get featured, there's also a Google form that you can submit down below. Let me know in the comments what was a design that you found interesting and how is your team going on this season. Other than that, best of luck out there this season for FTC.